Commercial aviation's peak of opulence is long-haul first class. Nothing about it is necessary. Not the Laurent Perrier rosé champagne, not the Bose noise-canceling headphones, not the fresh flower that watches over your seat. It is an experience that has been recalled dozens, if not hundreds of times on social media. There is no angle, no little detail about flying first class which hasn't been covered somewhere else already. Which is why here at Simply Aviation, we focus on reviewing economy class flights, showcasing them in as much detail as possible to outline what the sometimes quite subtle differences between airlines are. But as you already know, that's not what today's video is about. Today is about cashing in those sweet frequent flyer miles and covering the once in a lifetime experience of flying first class from the perspective of someone who knows every little detail about all major airlines economy class products. So this is not as much a review as we don't have a lot to compare this experience with, we'll simply try to give you an unprecedentedly detailed look at what flying first class really means, in which ways it's better than business class and in what ways it might not even be too different from economy either. I'm glad you're joining us in this exhaustively long and detailed video, so let's jump right into it. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new episode of our flight review series Brutally Honest, the series of narrated videos where we showcase the products of major airlines around the globe and the first time we're covering first class in a narrated video. Simply Aviation team member Simon will take us along a ride today from Hong Kong to Frankfurt in first class aboard Lufthansa's Airbus A340-600. As mentioned, the ticket was paid using frequent flyer miles. And there, the trick is always to come up with ways to spend the miles you've got as effectively as possible. There are tons of blogs out there focusing on this topic, so we won't get into the details of that. But I do want to mention how much it costs, because that's always the number one question when it comes to flying first class. Simon is based in Sweden, and in Sweden, if you spend enough money using American Express Elite credit cards, you get two 50% discount vouchers for award flights booked through Scandinavian Airlines Frequent Flyer Program Eurobonus each year. And to maximize the value of those vouchers, you're gonna tag as many flights onto a ticket as you can. Today's itinerary covers flights from Stockholm via London to Bangkok, then on to Hong Kong, from there to Frankfurt, and then via Zurich and Dusseldorf back to Stockholm, with all flights in business class except for this one. The whole trip cost 195,000 euro bonus points, but after applying the 50% discount voucher, it came out to just 97,500 points, as well as applicable taxes that have to be paid in cash, which were 3,125 Swedish krona, slightly under 300 euros. And one trick when booking such itineraries, Airlines don't like giving out first class seats to people who pay with points and will often only do so very close to departure when they believe the seat will stay empty otherwise. This ticket was booked one day out, so the day before the trip started. Otherwise, availability wouldn't have been so favorable. Anyway, how does someone who's used to flying economy class start a trip in first class? Right, by taking the metro to the airport. Luckily, Hong Kong has fantastic public transit connections to its airport. In addition to various bus lines, as well as ferries going as far as Macau and mainland China, there is an express rail line which gets you into the city in slightly under half an hour and runs every 10 to 15 minutes. We're taking the train there from Kowloon Station, and just like that, we arrived at Cheklap Kok International Airport. LH 797 to Frankfurt will be our flight today, leaving just 10 minutes before Cathay Pacific's flight. Lufthansa's first class check-in comes with little red carpets and can also be used by Star Alliance Gold Frequent Flyer status holders. In contrast to them though, you get your own personal assistance to guide you to the lounge. Thanks to the help by the lovely staff member, I got to use the crew line at security control and the fast lane for passport control, resulting in it taking less than 15 minutes from check-in to the lounge. Lufthansa First Class passengers get to use a separate area of the Plaza Premium First Class Lounge at Hong Kong Airport. Before dropping me off, my assistant asked if I wanted her to accompany me to the gate later on, which I declined because I didn't want to bother her with that too. 
Plaza Premium is a company which operates lounges across the globe, which are also often accessible with certain credit cards or lounge access programs, so they aren't the fanciest out there and are often quite crowded. As an actual first class passenger, I had the honor of having this tranquil separate room, but other than that enjoyed the same lounge experience as everyone else, including a self-service buffet with a variety of local and international dishes, as well as beverages including alcoholic ones. Although the really fancy stuff you'll get to eat and drink on the plane. Or if you insist on trying it on the ground, you'll have to book a first class flight departing Lufthansa's hubs in Frankfurt or Munich, where they have dedicated first class lounges, including a chauffeur service to the plane. They have something similar here in Hong Kong though, as Lufthansa provided me with a voucher to use the airport's buggy service for a personal ride to the gate. This is so decadent, Jesus Christ. First class passengers are always the very first to board and are only to be joined by Lufthansa's most elite frequent flyers, called HONS, which is short for Honorable Members, a status which is extremely costly to attain. For the last few steps into the plane though, you'll have to make use of your legs. Our Airbus A340-600 today was boarded using both forward doors, with the first one dedicated to first and business class passengers. We will be flying aboard Delta Alpha India Hotel X-Ray tonight, a 2009 built Airbus A340-600, one of 10 remaining in Lufthansa's fleet. The airline originally planned to phase those planes out, but decided to reintroduce them to service after the strong rebound in demand in 2022 and 2023. Lufthansa has already unveiled a brand new first class cabin, which is supposed to enter service later in 2024 on their newest planes, meaning that the hard product you'll see today will be a thing of the past in just a few years. Upon entering, a crew member checks your boarding pass. On the one hand to guide you to your seat, on the other hand to make sure nobody just sits down in first class who didn't pay for it. Sitting in 2K tonight, I was immediately offered a beverage of my choice, where I went with a glass of champagne. Along with that, tonight's menu card, wine list, amenity kit, slippers and pyjamas were provided too, and the crew member offered to hang up my jacket. The champagne provided during boarding was the Laurent Perrier Grand Siècle, which retails for around 200 euros a bottle. You can barely even call this leg room anymore, this is just like a full actual room. A signature element of Lufthansa's first class for decades is the real red rose at every seat. We pushed back on time at 11.35 pm, but didn't get very far on the first try. The flight deck received an indication that something wasn't quite right with one of the engine's thrust reversers, which needed to be checked out by line maintenance. The crew informed the passengers there was approximately 90 minutes to fix the issue, as anything over that would mean the crew times out before arriving in Frankfurt, so the flight would have to be cancelled. Up front in first class, they just started with the service while we were still on the ground with a hot towel and some rose petals. How romantic. The mechanics are meanwhile working on one of the engine's reverse thrusters, which is being set in operational, but therefore has to be manually set so. Meaning it's not just off, but it's physically unable to be deployed, which takes around an hour to implement, but doesn't affect the plane's operation too much, as the A340-600 has four engines and thus three remaining operational reverse thrusters. That's no danger to the flight at all, as it simply means pilots need to account for a different deceleration performance after touchdown. Like many little things that can be wrong with a plane, this one falls in the category of no need to cancel the flight, but needs to be fixed within a certain number of cycles, so the plane is still able to get back to Frankfurt, the Lufthansa's heavy maintenance facility. We now get to start off our dinner service with an amuse-bouche of shrimp, roast beef and tangerine, alongside another glass of champagne, or two. Ladies and gentlemen, you kept once again, the uh, repair is done. We are now just briefly waiting for like a fuel truck. Uh, we need to refuel uh, about uh, one ton of fuel, 1,500 liters. And as soon as this is done, this uh, won't take too long. Uh, we're ready to go. And just like that, we're good to go. Since it's 
past midnight already, the crew does their best to get the dinner service done as quickly as possible, so we get a maximum amount of sleep. Before that, let's have a brief look at the amenities. Each passenger gets a pyjama, which is theirs to keep, made by Van Lag. A pair of very comfy slippers was provided too, as was an amenity kit by Porsche Design. In it, you'll find a dental kit with a toothbrush, toothpaste and a floss pick, some body cream and hand cream by Augustinus Bada, some earplugs, a comb, a shoehorn, a mint, a pair of socks, and some aviator glasses style eyeshades. The crew was already waiting for me to finish this shot to serve dinner. They were very attentive, working with German precision during the entire flight. First class was always attended to by two to three crew members, and throughout the flight they always referred to me by last name, just as you'd expect from a five-star hotel. For dinner, they bring out the really good stuff, such as the 2007 Laurent Perrier Alexandre Rosé, which retails for over 300 euros a bottle. The dining table is set with some butter, olive oil, your own salt and pepper shakers, top of a tablecloth. A selection of warm bread is offered too, where I went with a pretzel roll and some garlic bread. Something special about first class in Lufthansa is the possibility to try real caviar, which I'll skip today as I can't eat caviar anymore, since I've gotten some serious food poisoning from it somewhere else. Once. So we'll dive right into the appetizers. We've got a colorful fresh salad with dressings, some smoked salmon with cucumber and hoisin mayonnaise, asparagus flan with pickles, as well as slow-cooked beef with pea and celery puree. The main course confused me a bit, as you could choose your sides for some of the choices, but not all. I went with the pan-fried scallop and prawn with asparagus and peppers, and the linguine as a side, which was my bad because that ended up being a fairly dry and slightly bland combination of things. But we've got dessert and cheese to leave room for anyway. Particularly the cheese was amazing, a great selection, and Lufthansa had some good port wine and sweet wine to pair with cheese and dessert. After that, your choice of pralines to conclude dinner service. First class gets its own lavatory all the way at the front of the plane, also with its own fresh rose and some additional amenities such as razors. Lufthansa's current first-class seats have been around for a decade by now, meaning a lot of airlines have surpassed them in terms of features and quality already, and, as mentioned before, new ones are on the way. All in all, they're still quite good though, particularly for sleeping, where in combination with Lufthansa's bedding, you'll get some great sleep. The lack of privacy and the small screens are the seat's biggest weaknesses compared to what other airlines are offering these days. After six continuous hours of sleep, I woke up just in time for sunrise. In first class, you get to choose when you want to have breakfast, with a full service being possible until at latest 90 minutes before landing, according to the crew. And this is where Lufthansa's first class truly shines, because the airline has airplane certified electric stoves on board, with the crew offering to freshly prepare eggs any way you'd like. A wide variety of options is offered from the breakfast cart, including roast beef and ham, smoked salmon, variety of cheeses, fresh fruit, grilled vegetables, muesli, yogurt, jams and honey, as well as pastries and bread fresh from the oven. But of course I wanted some of those eggs, which I ordered scrambled but not well done, and the crew nailed it. So silky and tasty, alongside some fresh crispy bacon and some hash brown potatoes. In case you are a devout Muslim and worry about the bacon and eggs being prepared on board, I asked the crew for you and they said they only finish off the bacon in the oven, so the pan only ever sees eggs and you don't have to worry about cross-contamination.
before we land, let's touch on some other things as well. The in-flight entertainment system is the same as on the rest of the plane, with Lufthansa offering a variety of movies and TV shows from all around the world. You get to use it with a pair of Bose QC25 noise cancelling headphones. Another glass of champagne, because you can't let that go to waste. And first class passengers receive complimentary access to the in-flight Wi-Fi. The first class cabin consists of eight seats, each with direct aisle access. You've got personal reading lights in the ceiling, but no air vents. Inside the ottoman, you've got space to store your shoes or a small bag, and using the control panel, you can adjust how far it's away from you. The seat can be adjusted in many different ways, from upright to lounge mode, all the way to fully flat. As we're descending into Frankfurt, I just have to say once again, first class is just too much. It's so incredibly comfortable and seamless, from the super quick check-in and assisted way through security to the buggy that takes you to the gate to an all-around amazing in-flight experience. If you want to hear a flight reviewer's honest opinion, from what I know about other airlines' first class offerings, Lufthansa is currently behind when it comes to the hard product, particularly in terms of privacy, but they have a promising looking new hard product on the way, which leaves me with just one room for improvement, the dinner service. Now, meal services are always unfair to judge when they are catered off base. Of course, Lufthansa gets their catering right out of Frankfurt and Munich, but out of Hong Kong, I felt like there is room for improvement. The appetizers felt like they were totally appropriate for business class too, both in terms of quality and presentation, and they just served three of them in first class. In other words, it felt like quantity over quality. Only the caviar service was a standout, but expensive also doesn't necessarily mean high quality. The main course was partly my own fault, but then again, first class should be as seamless as possible, and I don't particularly feel like I want to build my own meal. Just get an experienced chef to put a good combo together and offer that. Again, it felt like quantity over quality. I totally understand if some of you call this privileged whining, and it definitely is. But having reviewed more than 200 different airlines on more than a thousand flights, we have a good feeling about which service elements fit into which category, and this dinner service felt like business class quality, just more quantity. Where Lufthansa First Class shines is breakfast, the quality of sleep with those seats, the professionalism of its staff, and the airport experience. With that, welcome to Frankfurt. We're arriving on a remote stand today, which means I'll get to show you the first class transfer. At Frankfurt Airport, where Lufthansa has a dedicated terminal only for first class passengers, you'll always get a courtesy ride on one of their cars, which range from Porsches to Mercedes luxury minivans. When you depart, you get a transfer from the first class terminal to the plane, and when you arrive, from the plane to arrivals, but unfortunately not directly to the first class terminal, which is why I'm walking there. Luckily, even if your connecting flight after flying first class is in business class, like when you have a short haul connection, you get to use the first class terminal, which is absolutely incredible. From extensive buffets to an a la carte restaurant, a spa, napping rooms, and a giant bar, if you ever get to fly first class on Lufthansa, fly through Frankfurt, because this is where they have the first class terminal, and book your flights with a long layover, because you'll want to indulge in here. 
With that, thank you very much for watching and coming along. Make sure to subscribe as we have plenty of other exciting videos coming up soon. And special thanks to all those of you who are paid sponsors of our channel. Whether you are a paid sponsor, a subscriber or simply stopping by for this one video, thank you very much for watching and coming along today. I'll see you again soon for a new video. And if you're interested in another review, take a look at this brutally honest episode about Lufthansa's long haul economy class aboard the Airbus A340-600 from Los Angeles to Munich.